Good evening, and welcome to the 2019 Annual State of Schools Address. My name is Carol Studdard, and I am currently the school board chair and representative for District 2. This evening, we are gathered here to discuss the accomplishments and next steps of Clay County District Schools. <coughs> Over the last two years, we have seen tremendous growth and educational movement within Clay County. Tonight, Superintendent Davis will provide an overview of our school district, review the current status of our strategic plan, and share how every stakeholder can become an instrumental part in our public education system. Before we begin, um, I would like to remind you to please silence your <coughs> cell phone, please. <laughs> you knew I was going to do it. <laughs> hey, there'll be another year. <laughs> I just wish that Clemson quarterback wasn't a freshman. <laughs> okay. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge distinguished guests and elected officials. First, members of our school board, District 1 and Board Vice Chair, Ms. Janice Kirk Karakis. <laughs> District 3, Ms. Tina Book. From District 4, Ms. Mary Boa. And District 5, Ms. Ashley Gilhausen. We also have tonight our former superintendent of schools, Mr. David Owen. And Mr. Ben Wortham had planned to be here tonight. He couldn't come because there's a very serious illness in his family. I ask you all to please keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. And I would like to now introduce our elected officials, our Clay County Commissioners that are here tonight. District 1 and Chairman, Mr. Mike Sella. Mr. Wayne Bowler. <laughs> District 4, Mr. Gavin Rollins. <laughs> and District 5, Mr. Gabriel Hendry. <laughs> He's back in the back, waving his arm. <laughs> Other elected officials and distinguished guests that we are honored to have here tonight are Ms. Melissa Nelson, our current state attorney. <laughs> Ms. Molly Coral, who is here on the behalf of the Clay County Tax Collector, Mr. Jimmy Wiggs. <laughs> Mr. Tracy J. Drake, who is here on behalf of the Clay County Property Appraiser, Mr. Roger <laughs> Mr. Stephen Kelly, the Vice Mayor of the City of Green Cove Springs. <laughs> Ms. Connie Thomas, the councilman, Councilwoman from the Town of Orange Park. <laughs> and Ms. Amy Pope Wells, the Chair of the Clay County Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Did I miss any? Oh. We also are honored to have Jim Horn here tonight, our former Commissioner of Education and Family. And you are here to Dr. Horn the Senate. Thank you for this panel. At this time, I would like to welcome Father Donald Sullivan to the stage to provide this evening's invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you especially for all the children in our county. They are the future of our community. Their training and formation is in the hands of their parents. For these parents have enlisted the help of educators in this task of formation and education. We ask you to bless all who have a part in this process Bless the superintendent of schools, the members of the Clay County School Board, all administrators, teachers, 
counselors and coaches, all those who serve on the office staffs of our different schools. Fill these people with your spirit. Give each of them wisdom and the discernment in the decisions they have to make. May they always put the welfare of our children first, so that those children who may graduate from our schools as young men and women who will be imbued with strong moral principles and with the desire to become upright citizens who will be a credit to our community and to our state and to our country. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Sullivan, for your inspiring and encouraging words. I thought of a couple other people I wanted to introduce. You know, behind every successful man, there's a good woman <laughs> and a good mother. Mm -hmm. And I would like to introduce Natalie, da Miss Natalie Davis, mm -hmm. Mr. Davis's wife, and his mother, Carol. Now we have our presentation of colors presented by the Orange Park High School, NJROTC, under the direction of Lieutenant Williams. Please stand for the presentation of colors. Okay. Followed colors. by the Pledge of Allegiance, who will be led by the 2019 hey. Lake County Teacher of the Year, Mr. Jason Cook. Ready? Face. Forehead. Heart. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. School, for leading us in the pit and what you do for our students every day in Clay County. For some of you who may not know, Mr. Poole was our Clay County Teacher of the Year for this past year, so he'll be handing over the reins for just a few more days. Thank you. Before we begin with tonight's formal address, we would like to share a video that staff has created that truly captures what it means to discover endless possibilities here in our Clay County District Schools. It's a special time to be in Clay County District Schools and we know that uh, what a great community that, that we have. But becoming an A school district really truly allows us to become a premier uh, district within the state of Florida. I think that the Clay County School District now is in better shape than it's been for several years. We have once more uh, uh, gotten back into the top 10. We're now number eight in the state and we uh, look to go even higher and uh, we are progressing each year and I'm sure that's going to continue. We have a quality education here and public education in Clay County is, is quality all the way around. Yeah, right now, ever since we, we returned back to an A school district, we've had a significant amount of individuals and aspire to come to Clay County. And I would tell us, we will do everything we can to protect our, our schools from our neighborhood with our neighborhood students. But we, we see that surrounding counties are calling us every single day trying to find a seat because they understand that the quality experience that we provide for every one of our learners. We see that in the next, uh, I would say, five to, to 12 years, we're gonna have an increase of 4,800 students coming to Clay County. 
County. The First Coast Beltway is going to allow us to have new opportunities for families, new builds, new communities. So we have to be ready and available for our newcomers and we will continue to work hard to make sure that they are a, uh, in a school district, not only for now, but for years to come. Northeast Florida in general is a growing region and Clay County in particular, especially with the construction of the First Coast Expressway as it continues to be built through the region, is going to continue to attract buyers and more people to the region. And so growth is critical for our industry and having an A-rated school system allows you to attract uh, those families to move into your county. And with our tax base and quality of life, all that's very important to make sure that uh, you know uh, folks not only have jobs but uh, there's less government interference and and uh, into their lives and low taxes at the end of the day it starts and ends you know with you know clearly the school district and, and education uh, whether it's higher ed or K through 12 in terms of you know the opportunities we afford our youth and allow them to proceed and, and obviously move into professional careers as, as well as hopefully college and, and other uh, training opportunities but I think the more that we can uh, rely on the community to, to support uh, the school system's efforts and it seems like the superintendent uh, continues to do that and embrace that which I think is uh, refreshing. There really is a special relationship uh, between our school system and the businesses and families of Clay County and it's important for there to be open lines of communication that there really be a sense of partnership and community uh, between all aspects of our community. We have so many hardworking professionals in the Clay County School System, that they're up to the challenge. And uh, one of the uh, measures of, of how their school district is performing is these ratings that we have every year. And we're all proud that the school district has an A rating. And what that does is it tells the world that Clay County is, uh, is a good place to uh, raise a family and to uh, if you want to uh, start a business or hire people or work here, that this is a good place that you can be comfortable uh, setting up shop. And community partnerships are a must. You know, we talk about, uh, I'll give you an example, we talk about safety. You know, safety, we can't do it in isolation from a school district. Safety is linked to the home. Safety is linked to, to how we interact with the community. Safety is linked to, um, to you know, whether we, how, do we feel safe when we drive in our, on our roads? Do we feel safe when we go to the movies? Do we feel safe when we go to our restaurants? It's all about us wrapping our arms to, together in order to address, uh, you know, difficult topics, and I only use safety as one of the facets, but community's uh, partnership is, is instrumental in having volunteers, into having uh, you know partnerships for our students to have internships and externships, for us to have uh, you know, opportunities for us to round our students with, uh, within business and organizations so they can see the pathways and opportunities that they have. I think this past year has been really important, uh, especially with the uh, introduction of the school resource officers in the town of Orange Park. Uh, we were able to put resource officers in both elementary schools and our junior high and the, the ability for those officers to be able to touch the lives of those kids on a one on one basis I think is going to change things dramatically going forward. Um, when the opportunity presented itself for us to have our officers as school resource officers in those schools uh, we, jumped, we jumped on it, we knew it was something we wanted to be a part of and we were excited to have our officers in those schools. Um, since our officers have been in the schools, we've seen a, a great uh, increased relationship with the school district and the, the children and the parents in our district here in our city. Uh, our officers are there every day interacting with the students involved in the after school pro uh, programs and it, we've really seen a positive outcome from that. The partnerships with the school district are very uh, are valuable to us because uh, not only with the business community supporting the schools so that we can achieve greater things for our students, also the uh, community support from the parents and the uh, citizens in the community. Uh, by working as a team, we are able to achieve even better things for Clay County Schools. We never had a superintendent since I've been president. This is my sixth year that I've been president that was um, so interested in our teachers' point of view of things and so a partnership with us the entire time. Um, when he does something, he lets me know, we talk about it. But the parents are very involved in the school system and I think also that, you know, the teachers are extremely involved and the SAC committee's all over the place, you know. There's so much involved in teaching and so much that teachers do now that was never done 20, 30 years ago. Us being a, a school district, 
is going to is going to produce a, a big change here in this county and in this city, and we're already starting to see that. A successful community really depends on having a successful school district. I am committed to supporting our schools and fostering positive relationships with our students, businesses, and families. I'm excited for the future of Clay County as we continue to strive for excellence and I am committed to supporting the efforts to achieve a world-class education. For those of y'all who are out there and have not had the opportunity or luxury to partner with Clay County District Schools, please know that our hand is extended to you. We need your partnership and not only from a financial standpoint, but we need your wisdom, your, your viewpoints, we need your decision. We have advisory communities, advisory boards that we have through our CTE departments that, uh, that you can be an active member of that to identify pathways and experience for our kids through internships and externships. For those of y'all who want to be a partner and, and seeking, please see me, see, you know, email me at uh, go to oneclay.net, find my email address, link, reach out to me so that we can really bring you in and make you become and help you become a part of this great adventure in Clay County District Schools. I would like to now turn it over to our school board vice chair, Ms. Janice Caracas, who will introduce the superintendent of schools. joining us at the 2019 State of Schools Address. It's an honor to stand before you tonight as one of your school board members. As I look around the room, I'm reminded of one of the hallmarks of our democracy, our ability to collaborate and come together to achieve a common goal. This is something that you don't always see in the world where countries struggle under oppression and dictatorship. In fact, in many countries, I wouldn't be here before you as a woman holding elected office. But that's not how we do things in America. Since the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, Americans have been coming together to achieve common goals. This is especially true in education. Over the last 200 plus years, we've seen American schools evolve from one-room schoolhouses to multi-million dollar facilities housing libraries, computer labs, cafeterias, with school district budgets totaling hundreds of millions of dollars. But as Americans, we come together to make it a success. Here in Clay County, no one embodies this sense of collaboration more than Addison Davis. As Clay County Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Davis has brought together key, state, key stakeholders in our community, from parents, students, and teachers, to the business community and faith-based leaders. He has fostered a spirit of teamwork and collaboration throughout the school district. One of the things that I appreciate most as a school board member is the ability to work collaboratively with our superintendent. As a former educator, the knowledge and passion that Mr. Davis brings to Clay County is evident in the success that we are already seeing. What impresses me most, however, is his ability to listen with an open mind and his understanding of how to work with all stakeholders. Mr. Davis is aware of everyone's role in the success of our district. He has devoted a lifetime to public education. Over the past 20 years, Addison has held almost every position within a school district, starting out first as a teacher, then working his way through school-based administration before being promoted to district-level leadership. Mr. Davis is known for his unique ability to lift student achievements in low-performing schools. And serving as chief of, school, uh, chief of schools for the Duval County School District, the nation's 20th largest district. In 2016, Addison Davis was elected superintendent of the Clay County School District. It's been exciting to work with him as he transforms our school and returns Clay County to an A-rated school district and brings us back into the top 10. It's been a true honor for me to serve with Superintendent Davis during his first two years in office, and it's a privilege for me to introduce our speaker tonight. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Clay County Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Addison Davis. Ms. Caracas, um, you know, I'll probably owe you some money, you know, the, you know, on the way out. See, me or Natalie, one of us, will be able to take care of it. And thank you, Ms. Studdard, as well, for, um, for, uh, for helping me in a, uh, you know, start off in the MC 
But thank each of you for being here this evening. You, you being here this evening really signifies your dedication, your commitment to public education, and your commitment to Clay County, and as we seek to evolve and continue to improve the teaching and learning processes within our, within our organization. For us tonight is about, not about just Addison Davis and our leadership team, but, but tonight's about our teachers, our support staff, our, our business community partners, our faith-based partners, and our students and our parents. It's about us working collectively to identify singular goals that will allow us to move forward as an educational system. However, with us tonight, we will not only identify uh, you know, accomplishments, and we will also identify areas of next steps and then identify organizational priorities. But along with all these achievements and academics that we will identify and accomplishments that we'll identify this evening, it cannot go without great support and great governance. And tonight I'd like to recognize the school board of Clay County because they did an excellent job, A, dealing with me every single day. It's like putting on a seat belt along with, uh, you, know, a, you know, a helmet with a chin strap and, uh, you know, with roller skates and trying to get things done. But I'm really thankful for them. Let's give them a round of applause for the work so hard. Thank you for it's not easy, you know, working with Madison Davis, I can tell you that every day. At the same time, I, know, I want you to know that this board has, has worked tremendously with me and my staff to make certain that everything we do is child-centric, is around students, and has worked to make decisions that impact not only our students, but the working conditions of every adult within this organization. As superintendent of schools, I am blessed to lead such an amazing school district. On top of that, I'm thankful and proud to live in a community where families understand and, and believe that our neighborhood schools are their first choice to be educated. Because Clay County District leaders and teachers and support staff, they are the best. And for that, I say thank you for these accomplishments that I identify, and thank you for being a part of this great organization. Let's give everyone a round of applause. The old group tonight has given a snapshot of the last 12, last 12 months. Well, I would love to go into the snapshot of the, uh, the last uh, 26 months. We'd be here all night. We'd probably leave after the 30-minute, you know, 40-minute session. And so tonight, we'll talk about the past, the present, and the future. We'll talk about areas that we've succeeded as an organization. We'll talk about who we are, where we're going, and where we aspire to go. At the end of the day, we'll talk about accomplishments, the next steps, and talk about how we will become the number one school district in the state of Florida. And uh, so we, we look forward to it. Um, as, as a district, one thing we came in, we wanted to make certain that we had a theory of change and a theory of action. We wanted to make certain that as we move forward, a little fast there, we're clicking, as we move forward, that we, we identified and were able to build one of the greatest environments within this organization that fostered learning. And if we did that, we knew that we can then develop on, that we could develop great educators and leaders in this organization that will focus on retention strategies, that will focus on recruitment strategies, and really create the best environment and working conditions for adults and working to build their capacity. And we know if we have the greatest classroom environment and we work to develop our, our, our educators, then, then we could focus on providing a quality education in every classroom to make certain that we had rigorous activities and curriculize that align with the spirit of every standard in every grade level and every content. And then if we do that, then we can focus on the community to allow the community to know that we cannot do this in isolation, and it takes 360 accountability for us in order to move great. This community truly needs to understand what we're trying to accomplish from a social, emotional, and academic perspective. It is our job to make sure that message is consistently communicated in order that we can start with one parent at a time, one community member at a time, one faith-based partner at a time, the same way in which Starbucks started, one cup at a time. And then if we can do that, we can then transition to create and build one of the greatest environments for our infrastructure perspective and make sure that we're being fiscally responsible and have our resources aligned every single day with this organization. And at the end of it, overall, what we're aspiring to do is prepare our students to be college and career ready. And by doing that, we make certain that we, this, this says K to 12, this is cradle to 12. We have got to make certain that we extend down to every family and know that there's a sense of care with us and we're, here, and we're there to support them. And overall, continue to build the leadership with every one of our classrooms as we move forward. 
Also, coming to superintendent, my role and my job was to make certain that I built to the capacity of the organization to make sure we have full option graduates. Or to make sure that we had, make sure that every student grew from a mental, emotional, social, and academic and intellectual perspective. Where we built these five prongs to allow them to be ready to, to transition to the military, ready to transition to college, or ready to transition to the workforce. By doing that, we have to make certain that they're college and, and, and career ready, by making sure we have the great CTE programs in every one of our schools and pathways where they can follow their hearts. We've got to make sure that they're academically prepared every single day in the sense that they have the quality curriculum exposed to that pushes them intellectually and the cognitive demands have to be so high so that we can compete with, with Poland, with Korea, and Finland. And we talk about making sure that every one of our students are culturally competent where well, they've got to have an opportunity to understand people who are not like themselves and being able to maneuver in the 21st century. And then transition to be able to be civically connected to understand the core values of Clay County and the rich history that Clay County offers and to be signified to be a great part of that, a great part of this community that we live in. And then finally, making sure that they are equipped for the future and making certain that they have become and prepared to be digital citizens but at the same time, we're being able to prepare them for jobs that do not even exist today. And that's making certain that they critically think, problem solve, analyze, and work collectively to read, write, speak, defend everything they do in the educational realm. If we do these things, then we will be ready to go and lead, and our kids will be able to compete. Also, additionally, our organization priorities coming in the last 26 months, I focused on making certain that rigorous activities are happening every single day in every classroom. Are we there yet? The answer is no. But we are working tremendously hard to get better in reference to what we offer and the resources we have for tier one, tier two, and tier three approaches within our classrooms and within every one of our schools. And then we have focus on talent, talent management. Are we making certain that we have the right people and, and then at the same time uh, retaining first round draft picks who are highly impact and skilled leaders and teachers and support staff to keep them in our schools every single day? so that our, our students can have a sense of hope. And then finally, are we making certain that we have a supportive environment? Is the superintendent, the leadership, the school board, support staff, the community, wrapping our arms around this entire organization and providing a sense of hope and a sense of care and a sense of direction for everyone academ academically involved in our school district? If we do these things, we will reach success. So the question is now, who are we? We're the greatest and biggest and largest employer in Clay County. We have nearly 5,000 employees. We have a budget close to $4 million. And I know Ms. Pyla can't be here tonight, but she you know, texted me today. I saw we got $3.7 million of the day. Can't wait to have access to that money. And if you're watching Ms. Pyla, we got to look through it. But I'm sure we'll do everything we can to help you out and your teachers. But, uh, you know, uh, but it's a large budget. At the same time, we have uh, the first point in time, the highest ever out of um, out of 40 schools in the accountability assessment by the state of Florida, 38 of the schools are A's and B's for the first time ever. <laughs> that is this is an increase from last year. Give you an you know, analysis in, 15, in, in 2015 before coming in, only 26 of our schools were A's and B schools. So great increase and great focus on what our teachers are doing. And at the same time, student enrollment, we're around 40, over 40,000 students they're in Clay County, under our umbrella for many multiple facets. You want me to use that? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whatever, dude. Keep going. That's an increase of around 800 students. You try both of them. They both may work. Maybe one of them. <laughs> we never know. I'll set it here. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't roll around, it falls down. I didn't do it with Raymond and Nathan, but I called him Daniel earlier. <laughs> I don't know who Daniel is, but if he comes up, I need his help. <laughs> At the same time, from a school perspective, who you know, what, you know, who are we? We've done a number of things from a you know support vega. We just launched the last 30 days Elevation Academy for students who are, who are on track for graduating who do not succeed or not succeed in a traditional environment. We've created a, a special blended model environment at Bannerman Learning Center to give them a sense of uh, you know care, to give them a different perspective on learning, so we get a chance for them. And that we opened up for 60 seats in the first day. We had over 40 students and teachers standing and ready to educate them. Not only do they get an opportunity to expedite the learning and have a blended learning, to have one-on-one -on -one with teachers but work through a blending concept as well, but they'll have accessibility to emotional social counselors that can help them get them on track and help them, help them become organized within, within their uh, short-term and long-term goals. 
but we also have over 500 business partners in the organization, and we have, you know, the 42 schools that we have, 11 are tied to one, all in elementary. I know we have junior high schools that are going to potentially qualify for next year. And then in the last calendar year, we've had over 200 positive articles, in, uh, you know, which is really focused on our, our ability to change the perception of Clay County District Schools. To show that we are ready and prepared to compete with St. that we wish to do. But a lot of this is categorical. You have general funds, which takes up the bulk of this money. And of the general funds, around 77 to 78% are basically spent on salaries and personnel and benefits. And then, then we come down to have uh, you know, special revenue money, which is directly linked to categoricals of how you spend for Title I, Title II, and IDA funding, which you have to spend it on particular asset you know, uh, components. And then we have debt services, which is around 2 or 3% of our budget that we have to focus on paying. And those are uh, items to pay for every single year for the Fleming Islands and the Oak Leaf schools, not Discovery Oaks. Mm -hmm. But to, to be able to pay the, uh, the long-term debts that we have for all of those schools that we needed and historically needed within the school district. And then we have capital projects. And I want you to look at this. Even though we have $42 million for capital projects, a lot of this money is um, categorical and it leaves us around $13 million to take care of 50, 50 facilities, meaning that we only have around, you know, uh, we, we, we don't have a lot of money to go to fix, you know, $290 million of deferred maintenance within this organization. Mm -hmm. And so, we, you know, I'll give you an example. With $13 million a year to spend on our infrastructure and our facilities, we just put a $1.2 million chiller in Orange Park High School. And that takes a lot of money, but it takes a lot of, you know, money away from being able to fix some of the, uh, the, the buildings and facilities that are some average between 40 and 50 plus years of age. So we've got to find ways internally to figure out what we can do to find additional revenue streams to help us with this, with this process. As we, you know, the, recently in the last year, the, the, the board worked collectively with myself and staff to identify, and, and identify a strategic plan and create uh, core values uh, that really signifies of who we want to best represent and what we want to represent within this community. Those core values are, are, are displayed on this image before you that talks about collaboration, engagement, equity, standard of excellence, also looking at integrity and innovation. These are, these are elements and components and core values that we, what we aspire to make certain the community knows that we will focus on as we continue to work and create one of the great, greatest uh, educational processes in a, in a world-class education every single day. What I'd like to do is uh, take a moment to acknowledge individuals or organizations who exemplify these core values. For the first one, I'd like to acknowledge, I'd like to acknowledge for um, collaboration and, and engagement for an ability for individuals to work collectively with us with common goals and a common singular vision. And that is for, you know, we have an organization that, or, you know, that has worked with us every single day to support our district to expand the educational offerings. We have a, we have a beautiful relationship with St. John's uh, River State College that really pushes us to create and expand accessibility and accelerations to every one of our, uh, every one of our schools and really gives a part where it gives the children the opportunity to move forward and take courses that historically they may not have been able to take. And they, you know, St. John's uh, River State College really works hand in hand with us to make certain that, that students are, are, are mentally and intellectually prepared to compete in post-secondary. So, so tonight I'd like to give the award for the, represents the organization that represents the best core values, the St. John's River State College. And we have Dr. Edward Jordan, who's the Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. If you please come up and be recognized, thank you for what you do for us. In addition, as we talk about equity, equity is working to ensure we have equal access and opportunity for all learners within our school district. In the last 26 months, we've made this a focal point. For us this year, we had an individual leader that created an environment for children of special needs who, was, uh, who were previously self-contained. And this individual allowed them to fully be fully included in our classroom alongside typical learners. This individual promoted a welcome environment for all and valued differences. While this implementation was somewhat rough, you know, we had some, like, some barriers for this implementation, this individual has continued to work collectively with myself, with the school district, with Ms. Paiva, with our teachers, in our communities, and our parents.
to make sure we got it right. And I would tell you why this individual is forward thinking for her efforts to make sure that every student, every learner can, is performing at their best and being exposed to quality standards. We know that we have to continue to support her and her teachers to make certain that we continue to have the greatest experience for kids. And this individual has a really focused on accelerating learning. And this individual who brings equity to our school district is it also create a sensory room called um, a Flamingo Island. Where kids who are, where, where kids who um, have disabilities have the opportunity to go to a room and really have to re mentally relax and refocus for their and refocus their learning so they're prepared to go back to the classroom. And that individual who took the courage and, and, and was willing to put students with typical learners is Mrs. Jennifer Collins, a nice. principal at Fleming I and Elementary. In our standard of excellence, it establishes high quality expectations for all. In this end, we have, uh, you know, it's, it's unique. We have an opportunity to identify individuals, uh, two individuals for this standard of excellence, and we, and they're both at the same school. It didn't work out that way. We didn't say, hey, we're going to be lazy and it's going to be easy, but it's for individuals who we really exemplify the hard work. One is a leader who I challenged two years ago who had a C school and a junior high school, and the first time I walked her school and I said, this school should be an A school. The challenge has been extended. It feels great. The culture is awesome. Not only did she take that challenge, but she made it in A school that, that, that same year. The next year, what she did was maintain the A. This individual exemplifies instructional leadership every single day when you have conversation. And not only does she signify uh, you know, exemplary work as relates to you know, instructional leadership, but she owns every district initiative that we put in place. She owns it, she leads it, and she drives the work. In addition to that, she, she uh, builds one of the greatest cultures. So if you haven't had a chance to walk, Lake Asbury Junior High School, please do so. Because when you walk in the building, you feel the environment. You feel that it's an A school every single day. And that leader who exemplifies standards of excellence is Mrs. Becky Murphy. Yeah. Centric, every, you know, anything that this individual does in his classroom, it's a rock star. So if you had a chance to go, not only do you go feel the culture, but I want you to go to a classroom where no matter what students this individual gets, and whether the, they push through it through a um, through the uh, master schedule, may have to put some kids in classrooms that it may not be, uh, you know, through their heart, this individual embraces them and tries to get them and encourage them to be a part of something great through the fine arts. This individual is an example when you walk into the classroom. Not only does he teach chorus and he, does he teach, teach drama, but he also does uh, instrumental work with making certain that we have cross-curricular you know, uh, implementation through the work of mathematics and, and reading strategies within this classroom. And he teaches chorus and math, mm -hmm. but he works tremendously in this work. Also, this individual is not afraid to challenge his students with big ideas and, and with, with, big, uh, with big projects, such as producing and, and working through Oklahoma. At the same time, this individual has done a great job leading our county through the all-county course, and he's also done a significant job preparing our students for the all-state uh, auditions. And I think he has four or five this year. It's my pleasure to, um, to introduce a rock star in our classrooms, this is Mr. Evan Gold. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we talked about integrity. We focus on building a positive relationships based on respect, honesty, and um, you know, uh, through our school district. And we have an individual that there, you know, this one individual who I, who I think represents this core value in the best manner is the first contact when they come to my office or they call from the school board. This individual, no matter who she, you know, what she does in our, you know, in our school district, she gets phone calls. We have the greatest frustration for people in the in the in the main office at the district level. She always finds a way to create calm waters and always exhibit professionalism. She deals with me every single day. I have no idea why she keeps coming back to work, but this individual is awesome. Um, you know, her certificate's a little different because she's the one who makes all my certificates, so we had to do it on a different color of paper. <laughs> We'll get you a real one, just turn it off your cell phone side. <laughs> I can't think of a better person that is the best representation of integrity, and that is Miss Karen Bush. Woo! the state of being whole and um, really undivided her her advocacy for um, for uh, school counselors this individual leaves to work every single day that seeks the, the strength of her professional identity and she is always there to help and build the mental capacity of, of our school counselors and every one of our students she works tremendously hard in her new position and that is mrs. Erica Gilbert <laughs> If you're watching, we just gave some love to school counselors. <laughs> Thank you for what you do. Absolutely. All right, last one for innovation, and we'll get through it. You know, building a robust, sustainable system that uh, really has futuristic thinking and an active learner. We have an individual, when I go to Rida Elementary School, I always go to a fifth grade science classroom. And in that classroom, it just magic happens. And not only does she have a 15 point uh, percentage increase in proficiency last year, and she teaches every fifth grader in that school, mm -hmm. but this individual, when you walk in this classroom, believes and supports inquiry-based learning, project-based learning, where kids actively are engaged, not only in just understanding content, but working to understand the mechanics of, of, of the scientific thinking. This individual has uh, uses Google Classroom to communicate with all of her peers and all of her students and all of her parents. She also coordinates STEM nights for, for, her, for her family so they can be engaged in the, in the thinking process to understand what STEAM is. And then she also developed a STEAM for FEME club, which is for females in the fifth and sixth grade to get them exposed to careers in the, in the, in the STEM, in, in the STEM uh, pathway and uh, through uh, post-secondary opportunities. So this individual is uh, no, another great teacher in our county. Her daughter is also the chair of my uh, student advisory council, and uh, she just is awesome as well. But Elizabeth Tony, if you're here tonight, come on up. <laughs> Time to get to the meat and potatoes. Before we get to this, I want you know this night couldn't happen without the hard work of uh, a number of individuals. You know, Ms. Ms. You know, Ms. Dennis, uh, Nicole Snyder. Thank you, ma'am. You know, uh, you know, Karen McMillan, Jamie, Jamie Ione. She worked so hard to make this happen. We're mm -hmm. really, we're thankful for it. We also had a title sponsor to help us get through this evening. This individual created uh, you know this awesome logo, the the brochures, the mail outs, and I couldn't do it. He does some great work not only within our school district but the outside of our school district. And that is Katie and Katie, Mr. Josh Katie. Please stand up. Thank you for everything you do. And I'll 
So we have another uh, you know, elected official in here, and this is Constance Butler, the mayor of the city of Green Cove. Let's give her some love. <laughs> So here we go. Let's try this again. Ah, all right. So now we'll talk about goals and, and accomplishments. And once again, uh, you know, as we talk about goals, this is a holistic approach and a team approach as we move forward that singular goal. So we're coming in, the first goal was talk about making sure we have quality education and instructional practices in every one of our schools. In the last 12 months, what we have done is realigned our curriculum guides to make certain that we have quality tasks in front of kids, to make sure that we have essential, great essential questions, to make sure we have awesome exit tickets that really tell us whether or not we have C uh, strong CFUs and whether or not students learn the concepts that we have to reteach. We also have to a point where we have coherent, uh, coherent mapping and focus and, and rigor with every one of our uh, curriculum maps today. Now, all of our curriculum maps, are they working, uh, you know, every single point, so there's still gaps? The answer is yes. But for us to realign in collaboration with our teachers and our district specialists, shows we're working to make certain that we have uh, the greatest instructional processes for our kids every single day. In addition to that, coming in, we had over 6,000 students who are level one and level two in the area of reading. And we didn't have a strong core intensive reading curriculum. And over the summer, with a collaboration with teachers, we built a strong curriculum that now allows us to meet our students where they are and allows us to differentiate the instructional process. Under the same goal, we've also met to make sure we identify um, greater instructional strategies. We now have implemented a read, discuss, read model in the sense that it allows us to focus on close reading, which is built, uh, built around increasing the students' confidence and confidence in reading complex texts. And that is making certain that we have that every single day in our classrooms. On top of this goal, not only did we select the best curriculum, we also made certain that we embedded the uh, DBQs in our ELA classes. And this is a um, document-based questioning techniques, which is a strategy that allows our students to use primary, primary source uh, documents to analyze and write. Pretty much our students are working every day to uh, respond to reading, and that's what we want them to have. Quality of being in front of quality text and allow them to synthesize, collaborate, have conversation, defend, all of the elements that they see every single day. Um, and in, in the last, I would say in the last 30 days, we also in the elementary model, we purchased Ready Laps, which is a supplement materials to put in front of our kids so they have quality text to continue the movement. Also, we transformed the learning, uh, the transformed the learning. We have made certain that we have district specialists in every one of our content areas that push out to every one of our schools to support teachers, to support leaders, to support students in order to, um, to make certain that uh, the interventions and the quality and the tier one, tier two instruction are taking place every day. We also have job embedded professional development. We have on-site professional development. We have one-on-ones, we have webinars. Everything that we can do to build the capacity not only of myself and my team and our leaders, but our teachers and our support staff as well to make sure we're moving in a common goal and that we also have goal-based management opportunities. And then additionally to that, we've also had a narrow focus on instruction. Last year we focused on literacy, this year we focused on mathematical practices and science. Now no longer do we have you know, meetings for leaders that are informational rounding, where every one of our cabinet walks up, to the, you know, walks up in front of them, like I'm doing right now, and speaks at you about information that can be sent in an email. Everything we, do is, everything we do now is about a practitioner standpoint. We now have instructional rounding with our leaders, we take them to schools, we look to calibrate our lens, and we focus on curriculum every single day so they can work side by side our teachers so that we can work collectively to identify best practices within the educational setting. And then also we work to build their instructional knowledge to make sure that we have calibration walks that we walk with our leadership teams to make sure we understand what good and quality instruction looks like so we can provide bite-sized actionable feedback to our teachers in order to lift instruction. And by doing this, we have tiered our schools. We tier our schools by the, the years of experience of our teachers, the knowledge of our teachers, the knowledge of our administrators, the instructional lens, the instructional needs, the new curricula, FSA data, EOC data, um, uh, the climate and culture, we, the, 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 uh, the status of professional development implementation, and then we triage schools to determine what uh, you know, immediate services need to be provided in order to provide great supports. In this area, we've, uh, you know, while doing all this and, and making certain we've had these accomplishments, I want you to pay attention to this document. This, this slide right here is a, uh, you know, a 12 year analysis that shows where we are from a budgetary standpoint for funding for students. If you look, we have a comparison of what we actually get for FTE along with the, um, the, the, the consumer price index, which shows the, the, the rate of inflation over every single year. 
if you look at this document, yeah, we are celebrating that since 2011, we do show an increase. However, we, we, if you look at from 2007 to 2018, we only get $34 more per pupil to educate them. Now, if we had that, that money, which I know, the, you know there's not enough money to go around, but if we had that money for inflation, we can do so many great things in education. But I say this for you to bring this to awareness. We continue to do more but less, but I would tell you our local legislators have been tremendously, uh, you know, worked tremendously with us in order to provide additional funding and to bring, and to bring money and initiatives to our school district that we wouldn't have. We thank them, but it has to grow legs outside of them. While we have great work from Mr. Cummings and Mr. Bradley, we've got to connect with uh, Tallahassee to, to push to make certain that public education needs to be funded and funded adequately so we can really meet our students with their need and allow them to reach their full potential. <laughs> this slide talks about our accomplishments. In one year under the umbrella of goal one, we see that we have a record high graduation rate at over 90% for the first time ever. And this is this one. This is the hard work of our of our college and career coaches, our principals, Terry Connor, who meet in school counselors, who really meet every single day, you know, every single day to look at academic histories and to talk about ways we can help our students to get on the cohort and be successful. In addition, we're ranked number eight in the state. When I came in, we we're ranked number Woo! 18. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> And then we, in one year under this goal, we've also, we've also brought in close to $2 million for school recognition funds. And those for schools that become A schools, you get money to reward and provide incentive bonuses to teachers and support staff. And over the last two years, we've brought an additional $1.6 million to our teachers and our support staff, which is great work. And you see this, this document also talks about how we've increased CTE. We've also increased college readiness. We've increased, uh, you know, our status to become a top ten. We're number one in biology, number three in, um, you know, eighth grade science, and so forth and so on. It's because of great concentration within this organization from teachers. Also, as we talk about goal two, goal two is centered around improving the managerial and operation of operations in our facilities. One thing we've done is make sure that we've doubled down on security. While Parkland, the, 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 the horrific act that happened in Parkland, and I want you to know that Parkland was rated the safest place to live in Florida. Mm -hmm. If it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. Since that has uh, re-energized our focus and our efforts to make sure that safety is one of our great, is and remains our greatest priority in this organization. So what we have done, we've increased school hardening, we've increased uh, our surveillance, we're linking that to local law enforcement. We made every secondary, every secondary school wear IDs for immediate identifications. We now have single points of entry for every one of our schools. We've added SROs along with guardians, which are school safety officers, and we were the first county to comply with a governor's request by day one in Northeast Florida. That's, that's a celebration for safety. And we've also added perimeter fencing. While we received $600,000 in 1718, this year we received $1.9. Uh, million dollars and we have we have that's not all that we have spent. I'll show you a chart in a minute We we continue to put money on safety as it is our greatest priority in our school district Also, we've improved the the financial status for our school district and, and make sure in addition to that Make sure that we have equity for all and every one of our schools now in every one of our schools again We understand mobility rates are, are, are increasing within Clay County and across all over the state and the nation now, if you go to uh, one school, if you go to Oak Leaf Senior High School today and you have to transfer to Clay on the other side of the county, we have the same offerings, the same curriculum, the same mentality, the same, uh, you know, processes to make sure we have equity so kids do not lose and have, and have you know, instructional uh, gaps as they transition from one school to another. We've also, you may not have known, we have Wi-Fi in every one of our schools in the last year. We haven't had that, so now we can meet our digital natives where they are. And, uh, you know, it, you know, it's, uh, I know, it's right in 2019 when we're trying to figure out Wi-Fi. And uh, but we made sure that that happened, and that's all to the, to the great um, movement of uh, Jeremy Bunkley and his team, who worked swiftly and fastly to educate our, to provide these uh, services to every one of our instructional classrooms. And then we've expanded, uh, you know, offerings for our schools in, uh, with, related to controlled open enrollment. Here's another illustration that talks about what we've done for safety and security and other elements related to this goal. We've done a threat assessment at every one of our schools to make certain we are prepared for undesired behavior if ever faced with that. We've also increased technology by 160%. Coming in in 2015, we had 13,000 devices, and today we have over 30,000 devices in Clay wow. County, 
as we seek to move that number to, you know, to get eventually to our one-to-one -one goal. In addition, safety and security, we've increased the funding uh, 220 percent, and that gets us to the 1.9 million. But we have worked diligently, and we probably and now we're probably going to spend this year projected close to six million dollars on safety and security with our with our plan to protect our students and the working conditions of our adults as well. And then more importantly, we we increased not only the fund balance, we've also improved our our. Um, our uh, bond rating uh, to an A status. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we ever got to go borrow money, we're in a better situation. <laughs> and uh, that wasn't the case a couple years ago. But we continue to prove that we are fiscally responsible and all the money that we spent, our spend or is aligned with our strategic plan. We're being thorough to make certain that we protect every dollar and every cent within our budget. And then coming in, I used to watch for prior coming in, you know, a number of individuals talking about the, the conditions on our buses. And uh, yeah, in the last couple of years, we, in the last two years, we've increased that by 83%. That's great work of uh, Daryl Sweat and Michael Kemp. And not only do we have 60 in the last two years, and by the end of February, we have another 20 that puts us around uh, close to 80 of our buses out of the, uh, the 270 that are on the road that will have AC conditions for, for, our, um, for our bus drivers and also for our students as well. And then we, so and one thing we've got to say is that we talk about debt services. $25 million was identified and found in order to build Discovery Oaks. Debt free and on time. And that's hats off to, um, that's right, that's hats off to the board for working hard to find the money. Dr. Kemp, Bryce, Mr. Stretland, and also Mr. Conn for making that happen. And then, you know, thankful for the community. But I thank you so very much for being your willingness to go back and, and, and believe in public education in Clay County District Schools. And we, you demonstrated that by going to the ballot. And showing that you truly cared and you're ready to support us and when you pass the the mill increase we have over 11.5 million dollars coming to the school district and we can do some great things for us for uh for the school district and uh with the uh with the tight uh, budgets um also we talk about the devices we uh you know if you look at the uh, this uh, this uh, continuum it shows and i'll put the goal on there because my team will be all over me but we see that we continue to to uh, reduce the, the student device ratio. We started at 2.5 devices per student, and now we're working to get the one-on-one -on -one device so we can meet our kids every single day. And the goal is by, for our kids to be able to use technology when they need, uh, whether it's communicating with their teachers, whether it's uh, communicating with a digital platform, whether it's in Google Classroom, to really become savvy enough to, to be sophisticated enough to be able to report and interact with their curriculums every single day if they need that for their affordability. Um, as relates to our, uh, we talk about improving the fund balance. This is a historical perspective of what we've done financially, and this is the hard work of our staff and the school board to make sure that we are fiscally responsible and we're paying attention to everything that we spend so we do not have duplications within this organization. Also, for goal three, we talk about respectful climate. One thing I, you know, I, I've tried to do, and I hope I uh, model and exemplify every single day, is to bring appropriate professionalism to this position and into this county to make certain that we have the greatest culture where people are proud to call Clay County a school, proud to attend and proud to be associated with Clay County District Schools. In order to do this, what we've done is increase, increase our community access because we know we can't do this alone. We've launched Clay Connect, which is a newsletter we send out every, every month to every one of our parents. We've launched Clay Connections, which is a video that we allow our parents to have a behind every stakeholder to have a behind the scenes perspective of what we're trying to accomplish every month within, within Clay County District Schools. And then also we work to, uh, to go and, and, and take this show on the road where I offer community connections and, and go to community rounds so that stakeholders can really talk to me about what's working, what's not, and what I can do differently as a leader. And then we also look to improve our social media presence. You know, coming in, we had around, uh, you know, around 150,000 individuals that have been a part of our social media trends. And today, we have over 600,000 community members that have visited our social media platforms. And that's major. And uh, while social media has some downsides, we have to continue to stay relevant in that game and show and share the great things that are happening. Also, we've improved relationships with the board. The board has been such, you know, so professional with their interactions with me and with this community. And we've worked over the last 12 months to become master board certified to make sure that we, uh, we are exemplifying our work and that uh, in our communication is daily. You know, board, me and board members work uh, tremendously to uh, protect our, our, our asset, our, our most important assets, our students. And then the same tier for, they, trust me, board members, they fight for our teachers, they fight for this community, and they fight to make sure that I remain and continue to, to push forward to be child-centric. I'm thankful for what they do. And then with mental health. This year with mental health in Parkland really striked the awareness and re-energized our work with mental health. 
We got $900,000 from mental health, and we, we doubled down on that as well. We added more social workers, psychologists, uh, coordinator of mental health, um, the individuals who drive the work from student discipline as well, in order for us to have a, a better control and a better assistance to leverage the, the networks, not only inside, but also externally, to be able to coordinate all of our efforts to better help our students. Now we've implemented social emotional curriculum and evidence to be successful and have early, greater early warning systems for our kids to identify if they may be at risk. And then we've expanded offerings to our kids to make certain that they are uh, having accessibility. In addition, we talked about climate and culture. One thing we wanted to do is, we, and I said this last time, that we really continue to hear how great Clay County was from a perception of how great this county is. And I pushed this district to have a scientific matrix to determine you know, if we had a true you know, analysis and, and data point to confirm this. So we looked at teacher surveys and we wanted to have a, you know, a feedback from our teachers to figure out how well we we're doing in multiple facets and multiple areas from professional development, from leadership, from curriculum, from career pro progression, from success and management, for how well our climate and our culture is. And after this analysis, we see that we compared, you know, I gave it a 16, 17, and 17, 18, we, showed, we, we, showed, we, we demonstrated annual growth, but not only did we show growth in 0.25 is considered annual growth, but we outpaced the nation as well on the TNTP Insight Survey, which shows and confirms that Clay County is a place to be, a place to teach, and a place to be educated. <laughs> this is another slide that shows that we continue to grow in the area of accessibility and you know, for our students. We see increased acceleration courses for our students. Now more than ever, we have kids taking more AP courses. We have kids taking more, earning more credits in APs. We have kids who are passing rate in AP and the three, fours, and fives is increased. And the kids obtaining dual enrollment credits have increased as well. We also have more students with, uh, that have, in the last year that have increased IB diplomas. And also we have more students that have increased their ACE diplomas as well, which shows that our kids are really ready to, to be pushed and be challenged from, a, from an intellectual standpoint. And then we have opened up more opportunities for students in junior high schools. Now we used to only let students who scored level four and five that have accessibility to algebra one. Now we have kids who are de deemed proficient level threes having access to algebra one. We can't tell kids they can't do it until they prove they can't do it. And it's our job to make certain that we have this accessibility to them and support them. And if they prove they can't do it, we give them all the supports to be successful. And then if they can't, we help them find an avenue that's best and provide immediate interventions. And on top of this, we, uh, we launched, and every one of our high schools now, coming in in the last year, have accelerated opportunities. No longer do we have ACE at this school and IB at this school, but we have collegiate high school at, uh, at two of our schools, and we have a capstone as well. So no matter what high school you go in this county, you have the opportunity to take accelerated coursework. So we have great teachers in that now. The new toy, and what we've done is to expand through the direction and working collectively with our school board, we have expanded, we have expanded choice programming. We've started a Montessori program at Swimming Pin Creek, and thank you to the leader and the teachers for being willing to take this on board. We have two, we have an, uh, two classes, and we have a waiting list of people penetrating and trying to get into our schools, and we just don't have seats. We also opened up pre-ACE programs at Lakeside Junior High School, and hope to expand that. And then Keystone Junior Senior High School, and we've opened up the Collegiate High School for, with the partnership with Santa Fe, and also at Middleburg Collegiate High School with a partnership with St. John's River College which are great accomplishments. In, in four, we talk about data management systems. Here we've done good work reviewing uh, data analytics, and everybody knows I love data, to look at that to inform our instructional processes. We look at, uh, you know, we, we look to, you know, to define how we get better. And we do that through data, health, data warehouse platforms. And looking at, uh, you know, we have over 20,000 users on iReady, over 20,000 users on the T3000s, which, uh, which allow our students to uh, differentiate instruction and allows us, allows us to scaffold the instructional process for our students to help them meet grade level expectations and beyond. But we also, to a point where we focus on at-risk students. Now with our lowest 33 percentile in, student, in students who, uh, who have been identified to, uh, as early warning at-risk students, we have an early warning mechanism that tracks students who have attendance, academic, and behavioral problems, so we can really gain access to our students in an earlier fashion. We know that students drop out in, in, uh, you know, um, mentally in junior high school, but they physically drop out in high school. And this warning system will allow us to address our students to keep them with this organization to keep them on the right path. 
as relates to goal five and our final goal, I know you're ready to celebrate. <laughs> our final goal, this is about developing great educators and support staff and leaders and teachers. What we have done, and you may not know, in the north part of the county at Orange Park uh, Elementary School, Orange Park Junior High School, and Orange Park High School, under the leadership of uh, Katie Moeller, who's in the back, and uh, she's happily retired, not coming back. <laughs> she, she helped us develop a partnership with the University of North Florida, and we called them the Professional Development Model Schools, where we have taken uh, you know, a number of internships and interns who are, a, who are taking the track to become educators, and we put them in these schools. And no longer they just come to these schools for two days a week. Instead, they are there five days a week, and no longer they have to go to classes at UNF. UNF instructors are coming to us and working with kids inside of students, students, I say kids, working with students inside of our classrooms. We have rich, real-time experiences. You know, you can have all of the, you can have all of the bookmarks and, and you know theories and all the book work you want to do. Nothing like opening up a classroom and giving you the keys and giving you your content and dealing with 25 Addison Davises every single day. I mean, I, mean, I, would, I, would, I would pull a fire alarm at that point. But at the end of the day, what we've done is we've become a model. And W.E. Cherry has been a, is, is a part of that process as well. We are trying to grow a longer and stronger bench for our teachers. We know that there's a national shortage. And I'm proud to say that we have less instructional um, vacancies right now than the surrounding counties, <laughs> if those of you are watching, and uh, you know, uh, hard work. But we're trying to make certain that we not only train the individuals who want to go into educa education, but we keep them and we retain them, because this is a great place to teach and a great place to live. On top of that, we've, uh, you know, we sweet-talked them through uh, you know, Jamie and also uh, Ms. Moeller. They're giving us 30 free master's degrees for teachers. And uh, that's, that's awesome as well. And, uh, if, you, and, and if you teach at one of those schools and you want to learn and you want to grow and you want to transfer to it, this is the place for you to get, you want to get your master's, teach at one of these schools and grow park. Sorry, grow park. We, we, are here to, um, we, we are here to help you and educate you and, and celebrate you. Also, we've also, we've, we've also focused on new teachers and our new teacher uh, support facilitators that go to our classrooms and make certain to not only focus on pedagogy, but focus on helping the new teachers survive. And you know how hard it is when you're going to a classroom and, it, and you're new and you're in the survival mode? We want to make certain that we retain our, our talent every single day and we have support staff doing that. And then we've created new pathways for leaders, aspiring leaders, those who, um, who aspire for success in management, leadership cohorts, so leaders can have a sense of hope and a sense of direction in order to evolve their practice. And then also we looked at uh, remodeling our professional development as well. So this, this one talks about, you know, today, this entire school year, we've had over 240 hours clocked in for individuals for success in management. And I say that because my cabinet and lead, district leadership needs to understand, you know, who would replace them if they, if they you know, hit the lottery one day. <laughs> you know, and you know, hopefully they would stay. I'm sure they won't. But we need to know who, who is up next, who is ready to lead, who aspires to lead. And the shadow initiative is, is, is truly important to our work. We also were the only school district in the state of Florida that has trained our teachers in STEM and coding initiative. That means we are, we are working to make certain that we have project-based learning in every one of our classrooms, and then also we're working to make certain that every one of our classrooms focus on the four C's, where we collaborate, where we have critical thinking, we communicate, and we are creative every single day. And then we are working to make certain that we train and have quality uh, training sessions in our summers and throughout the year, where teachers feel valued and their voice is always heard. Now, where does that lead us as a school district? Coming in, we were ranked number 18. In uh, 2016, we were in the last year, we moved up to number 12. And this year, we moved up to number 8. And this is the hard work of our teachers and our administrators and, and the school board for helping us. And uh, I, left, I, I left the last two blank. I was going to put St. John's in the last one, but uh, I'm sure I would get a nasty gram from somebody. I decided not to do it. Um, uh, this is a document that I want you to see the comparison of our grade level. 16 of the 21 assessed areas we improved or maintained. All of the green is significant and the orange is, is the area where we maintain. But you see, we still have areas for improvement. Areas in literacy, that's why we're focused on read, discuss, read. That's why we're focused on increasing to having quality, complex text in front of our kids every single day. And, and, and you see that we have an area of opportunity. If you look at hours for one, the reason hours for one decline is because I gave equity and excess to students. Bless you. I don't mind that. I don't mind that declining because we have more students exposed to rigorous classrooms, and I think that's most important. Um, 
As it relates to, um, to our school grades, and more than as you see from, from last year to this year, we increased the number of A's, B's, and decreased the number of C's, which is a celebration. We, have, we do have one, one school that uh, declined, and all the supports are, are there to support that leader, to support those teachers. And if you haven't walked that school this year, I challenge you to. It's a different place. And uh, they are working tremendously hard, they are focused, and they understand the, the, the support that, they, that they're working for in order to become and increase these numbers as well. Um, as it relates to um, comparison, now, Addison Davis doesn't only look at where, who we are as Clay County. We have to look at outside. These are life-size life -size counties that have the similar enrollment, the similar budget, similar number of employees. And if you look at all the dimensions that are assessed, we rank number second, only the second fiddle to St. John's. I make it a priority when I go to superintendent meetings to sit right next to him. Yeah. And to make sure he knows, I even try to park in his parking space. <laughs> make sure he knows that uh, everywhere we go, we're right there behind him and we're ready to, to, to move forward. This is a celebration with this data. And then at the same time, we talk about record high graduation rate. Thankful for our school secondary leaders right, mm -hmm. and everyone for making this a reality. And, um, and one thing I'm most proud of, if you look at the students in the subgroups or in the focus groups for the graduation rate, we see that at-risk students are moving consistently. We see that students with disabilities are continuing to move as well, meaning that we have greater focus on our students since they no longer have special diplomas. They now have to meet the regulations identified by every learner as well. And then we see that um, when we have uh, the last part of social economic status uh, students are moving as well. And we did slide last year for ELL students, but we will get it right. We'll problem solve and figure out what's working, what's not, and what we can do differently in order to make this a priority within our organization. And then, you know, last year I gave a, a self-reflection of where I thought um, I uh, succeeded, where I thought that I had areas of improvements, and what I believe to be next steps. Recently I gave a parent survey with Choice, and we linked on a number of questions that center around communication, with, uh, with the public, my engagement, uh, my engagement in communication with the community, my uh, looking at how we do, uh, offer a quality choice uh, programs in the organization, to look at my productivity and partnership with the school board, along with my leadership and expertise, and then also tr working to build a strong culture. This, these numbers represent community feedback. And uh, I think it was appropriate not only uh, for me to give my own reflection last year, but this year to reach out to the community to figure out how they feel we're doing and I'm doing as a leader. As you can see, the, they had a rating from one being the, uh, where they didn't care for Addison Davis and they thought I'm doing a poor job, to five being the highest area. And three is what we believe to be efficient and effective. So all of these, are, these numbers are inclusive of uh, threes, fours, and fives, which telling us that, it was telling me that uh, maybe we're doing some things right, but I truly honestly know that we have to continue to, to grow uh, to have better support for all of these facets in order to have an impact, uh, continued impact within this organization. And then talk about next steps. How can we get better? First and foremost, what we have to do is launch and implement a parent academy. That will happen in 2019, where we educate our community members and bring them in so they can really understand how to help their learners and help to educate them. You know, uh, it's a different generation with our kids. I know because I have two that go to the Oakleaf area, they didn't grow up like I grew up, you know? So how do we gain access to them? How do we better understand them? And then this, this will help them understand how to work through curriculums, how to look at, uh, you know, financial aid, how to apply for college, how to get in the workforce. We will also look at, in next steps, to look at making sure we better support our caregivers at home, to make sure they understand that at home, that's a place for first educators. We need them to be a partner in our work. And then we need to expand choice offerings to this uh, survey that we gave, the same survey that they reflected on my leadership. Visual performing arts, pre-Cambridge, pre-ACE, dual, dual language and, and STEAM were an area that they wanted to be able to focus on. So we'll work collectively to figure out if we can do it. It takes money to do it though, have this great vision. And then also we'll, we'll look to seek to obtain, we have a lot of anchors and we talk about academies. We will seek to obtain national models in 2019. We'll use a panorama survey to better understand our kids, to better understand how we can better support them and what offerings they need. We also use a Gallup survey and, uh, to look at uh, multiple facets of leadership, students, and stakeholders to figure out how well we're doing and what we can do to improve. And we'll expand the food truck. I hope you walked in and saw the food truck out there. Yes. Yeah, first thing I walked in, my mom, the first time she saw it, she didn't care how it looked. She goes, where's the hot cocoa? And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, she goes, I'm gonna run and get the water and all the stuff. I said, no, mom, please come and sit down. But uh, you know, this initiative that we, 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 we built, and thank you, Ms. Glover, Mr. Kemp, 
it, it's, it's growing legs. When you, if you see this, the food truck out of school during lunchtime, kids are running to it. And I guess they want that, uh, that, that uh, uh, nacho, pork, cheese fries. Oh, I don't know what they have. But uh, I would say that it, uh, it's not healthy, but they say it's great. <laughs> we got to expand that initiative. It's a nice looking truck. They won't let me drive it, but okay. <laughs> And then um, the next step we talk about organizational steps is to make certain that uh, we continue to, to highlight teachers and support staff for recognition programs. They need to be publicly acknowledged for their hard work. We need to make sure we have, I want to open up a principle for the day where business partners and community and business partners come in and are able to, to walk with our principals to see the hard job they have. It's roller skates every single day. They, you may have, think they have a calendar printed out every single day what they're going to follow. That stops when they turn the car off in the parking lot. Every single day is unique. Dealing with a parent like Addison Davis can take about three hours. And, uh, you know, so uh, it's unique. We want them to experience that so they can figure out how they can be a better partner in our work. In addition, we want to have additional revenue streams. And we have $290 million of deferred maintenance. Our schools, some of our schools, like I said, are 40 to 50 years of age. And we need to make them attractive, and I'm sorry for saying this word, they need to become sexy. And they need to become uh, you know, aligned to the 21st century learner. And then in addition to that, we need to make sure that we uh, want to launch a teacher advisory council, the same way I have a student council to gain access. And then we've got to focus on becoming a well school district, well employees from a mental and, 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 and physical standpoint, that we continue to provide the greatest education to our kids. And then we've got to open up pre-K and have three-year and four-year-old programs. The, er, the earlier that we can get to kids, the more we can create norms, uh, you know, with how they interact with each other, how they interact with curriculum, and how we can get them embedded in front of certified teachers of Clay County every single day. And then we've got to make certain that we have a greater partnerships, and we've got to find, we've got to find money as it relates to, uh, to money to do a number of great things for, for this community. So how do we become number one in our state? Well, community members, if you're out there, I need you to be, find proactive ways to be involved. If you have community members and neighbors that uh, you know, may not be involved and connected with the educational process, help them understand. We cannot do this alone. We have to be involved in this process. We encourage you to participate in events and tours to better understand what we're trying to accomplish in our, in, in, within our schools. And then also we want you to remain connected to the status, how well we're doing, what we need to do in order to hold us accountable. Also from educators, continue to pursue excellence. Continue to do great things. And then also we want you to be able to monitor you know, goals for that continuous improvement process and parents for you. We want you to continue to be an advocate for your child. But I want you to understand and remain involved in your child's academic life and social life. Make sure you monitor what they're doing on Instagram, Facebook, streaks, I don't know, whatever else they do out there. But be connected and involved in that, in that process. And then also remain up, understand that we're here to be a partner with you. Don't be just connected at the end of the nine weeks to figure out why Addison Davis didn't pass. Don't come at the end of the year and come and understand, ask questions of why Addison Davis didn't pass. We need you to be involved every single day and every week in the educational process. We have focus. You have access to grades. You have access to discipline referrals. You have access to everything. Push us, hold us accountable, and be a great partner in this work. We're here to work alongside you. And lastly, students. Students, we need you to take ownership of the learning process. Establish short-term and long-term goals. We want you to continue to demonstrate the respect for your staff members, the respect for your support staff, our school and our leader, and respect for your community, and make the right decisions. And sometimes you won't. However, if you learn from your mistakes, you'll continue to grow and you'll be a better person, and you'll be a better leader down the road. And lastly, dream big. Dream big and allow us to help you discover endless possibilities. Tonight, I want to thank you for everything and for you being here. There's so many places you could be. And I know that I, I, I covered a lot this evening and I covered it fast. But I want you to know, I care about Clay County. I'm dedicated to this community and I look forward to doing great things. Thank you and have a great night.